Hi, this is Hi Bob, Poor Bob, and we're about to play some Ultimate General Civil War. Hello, and welcome back. Today, we are going to be playing First Franklin for a second time. We're going to try to wipe him out, not take quite as many losses, hopefully, and try to stretch out the battle all the way to 2100, which is going to be a challenge, figuring out how to not lose men, but yet make it last that long. So, I will be recording this and then dubbing over the actual battle part just to make it a little bit quicker for you guys. So, we're going to try to speed right through it. I will see you guys whenever my army is all set up and I'll be dubbing over. You guys have a good one. Bye. Hello and welcome. So, I'm going to be trying to put some commentary to this today so here I'm just moving all my guys I went and sped this up to like 400% faster most of it will be about 200% there's going to be a couple little pieces that are 400 just because I figure there's no reason to have it be any slower than it can be it's going to be about 30 minutes long here I did learn something um, the battle does not last till 2100. In case you guys want to hear that right up front, it lasts till 1730. I think I ended a few minutes early here, but uh, not too bad. So we're doing that same strategy again, where we get the skirmisher to come out of position. And here we are sped it up again, um, just because this movement is pretty boring. Um... We are looking to get them out of position so that then we can sneak right on by and not get seen with our uh, skirmishers as they walk right past, which goes exactly as it did last time. I do make a couple mistakes here and there. I th think that the best you can probably do here is about probably 600 losses is the absolute best that um with a with a build like mine I mean obviously if you go like all artillery or something you might be able to do some things but it I don't think it'd be very easy to do so we do take a little bit more damage here than I was hoping to I was hoping to pretty much just take a hit here and there but we do take quite a bit of damage I mean, I mean, nothing bad, just more than I had planned. I should have moved that guy back as soon as I knew that that guy was moving kind of close. And I kind of regret it, because I do take a little bit of damage. I did have that bug that happens where you accidentally move to the wrong side, but I was able to fix it by just telling him to move back this time. I got lucky. It would have been a start over. This is only the second time I've played this map. Ever. So I am pretty excited about the way that it goes here. I did not have to do any um, like testing or anything like that. I think that the way I have it set up here is pretty much exactly the way that I want it to be. Uh, I just make a couple mistakes. Maybe... So about 300 losses more than what I could have done if I had just been careful. Of course, like this, that's only 7 losses. That's barely even worth mentioning. But yeah, I should have moved further back there. We are going to go ahead and run Polk to get him into the thing there. And I'm like, I keep forgetting that I need to go ahead and hold back one person's skirmishers. Whoever is going to be the guy that sits there. And technically one more but I already had them held back, so it worked out perfect. So this time I do a lot better job of doing the whole, I think at the end of the last one I talked about it, continuously cycling units towards the north instead of only doing it at the very end or only in certain spots. I make sure and get more units cycled towards the north so that I can, uh, I can just do better just does better I don't if 
I cycle guys to the north and I don't get so many men stacked up at the south. And that was something that I really ran into at the end of the last battle is that I had like five or six units walking all over each other trying to uh, push up the from the south. Which did not work very well, to be completely honest. Here, I make a mistake. I should be looking at these guys, and I see that their condition is a little bit lower, and I was going to, like, let them rest, but then I go ahead and move my general in there. I should have left him back. Um, it's good to have him there to take shots from the artillery, but we shouldn't have had him take shots from the... Uh, unit of infantry until we had to so we're just kind of gonna move like that just to get them shooting him and then we'll go ahead and move in with three units to go ahead and kick him out of the fortification there that should work just three units is usually enough three units of skirmishers especially if they get the first volley on them here we do a good job of getting shots on this guy. It is always difficult with skirmishers wanting to pop back and forth and things like that. They get blocked by each other. It just can be really difficult to get them to um, do what you want them to do. We do take about 15 losses on one of them it looks like. And a few losses on another. 20 losses on another so far. So, so far we haven't lost hardly any men and we've kicked him out. So the next step is to go ahead and move in division down there and work on getting into position for taking out the second unit in, no, is that the first unit? I think it's still the first unit. The first unit in fortifications along the south. So here we're looking to keep the unit running away is the goal so we want a couple skirmishers to chase him and get a couple shots on his rear before he gets too far away we are looking to be more aggressive with more units up front and only move units later on backwards to uh, hold with the cavalry later so we are trying to keep that going so we continuously use our general to take advantage of the fact that they don't count towards our losses I mean I just I can't see doing it any other way because they don't count towards your losses like every single battle your general should be taking some shots because it's worth it and the more experience your general has the more damage he can take the more benefit he will bring to your team and that's just the facts like you that's the way you can use them here I do make kind of a mistake. I should kind of hold back with a couple of those skirmishers probably so that we can shoot the guy coming up instead of shooting the guy that is still flashing. But I see him start turning around to shoot and I'm like, I just gotta shoot him. So then I take that shot there. I get lucky enough here. I don't take too bad a shot, but really I should have not taking all those shots on that guy because now we've got a guy coming up and it's hard to know exactly how that's going to turn out we're going to capture the supply wagon again up here that works out really well we do take down enough of them that I think that he doesn't get off a full volley but I can't remember for sure we are Barry skirmishers are taking hits left and right from the artillery and stuff. We can't get down to them because this guy is here. But that's just kind of how that goes. Like, nothing we can do about it right now. 
We're trying to get Hood up so he can take care of Gilbert because I'm afraid that if we're not careful, Gilbert is going to... Uh... So it was the second one that we're getting ready for with this guy. That's right. So you see how Leggett was south the first time. This time he's going to be the one like to the side. And then next time he'll be the one above, kind of. And we'll just keep rotating like that. I am a little bit sad here that I lose track of... Uh, I mean, I don't really lose track of Barry Skirmishers. I just can't get them out of the way because they're stunned. So, But he's going to take another big hit from the artillery and I think another hit of like 40. He takes a pretty good size hit there. So there we start seeing a unit of Skirmishers and we want to get shots on them, but we don't want to get shot by too many men ourselves so we just kind of have to do what we have to do hope for the best so we're just moving everybody forward constantly I don't remember how many how much more Barry takes there but it's a little bit more than I would have liked yeah 179 yeah he's getting pretty low I prefer to get him broken put him back away before they get below 200 if I can or once they get dip below 200 at all I like for them to be put back away and then broken back out because it, it's getting a little close okay so here I feel like I could have pushed the attack on that bottom guy except for the fact the skirmisher was there but even with the skirmisher there I still think that we probably could have gotten away with it if we had just been a little bit more careful. But it's hard to know for sure because it is a lot going on. We're wanting to bring back Seymour to him. Pretty soon we're going to want uh, the other guy to get his as well. We're still looking to get these artillery actually ran off because we've barely done any damage to them. So here we're going to go ahead. I think I declare the attack at the same time because I'm like, you know, the guy's going to move forward and it'll be fine. It'll all happen kind of at once. We should fire at him first, but I think they fire south instead, but it ends up being fine because he routes immediately. So that works out okay. A little bit surprised that he routed that fast and I'm a little bit I wanted I messed up there I should have let my guy keep firing I pulled him back thinking that he was about to get fired at and instead the guy didn't fire at the time which would have been the perfect chance to allow my guy to get a bunch of shots we do there's Barry skirmishers 159 yeah he's getting really low there I that's that's really too low to let him get down if we can help it at all and so we've rounded another one we've started eating into a couple of these artillery units but not as much as I would have liked we need to get Leggett's moved up we need to keep moving guys around and I do make a mistake with craft there I thought that the way I move him wouldn't cause him to turn and I mean I basically told him to move straight backwards not straight straight backwards but I mean come on it was pretty close he should just turn around and walk away but he doesn't he turns and that guy unloads on him and I'm just like oh come on but he only takes like 65 deaths there but that's that's like the one of the big I could have done better moments and then he turns as soon as that gets done he turns and then it just shows me his side and I just get to light him up so it ends up that it works out okay in the end because he just goes stupid. Here we have several infantry units trying to rush my general, which is a little stressful. 
I'm not going to lie. I was not sure how that was going to turn out. I thought for sure that things were going to go worse than what they did. Like that I just lose him straight up. Because if all those guys fired at him, he wouldn't even stand a chance. But very few of them actually fire at him. And it turns out that it works out in my favor this time. See, Leggett gets just a little bit too close there. So we go ahead and pull back and make a pretty solid wall there. You can see they drop their rifles and stop firing. So that worked perfectly. We go ahead and move up there since he is flashing. We have a skirmisher that we need to get back to its unit back there. But it'll have to wait for a minute. Get all these guys put back away and broken back out. That guy. Yeah, that guy. I think that's... Uh, I can't read the name. Reigns. I think that's Reigns. So, Rain is one that takes more damage than most. This time. Just kind of the way it goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I wish I could have gotten away with having just three guys up here to take out this cavalry. But you really need uh, Seymour there to just stop them from getting started towards that direction and I don't think that there's anything any other way to have it work so I don't know where Reigns takes all the damage but that's a pretty good start he t took a big hit on his um, his skirmisher unit but I feel like they still took even more than that so We'll have to keep an eye out and see what else Rain loses, because it's quite a bit, I think. More than I thought it would be. Here I'm struggling, because I want to send Hood south. But I know that if I do, Gilbert is going to come down from behind, and is just going to ruin my day. So the only two options are to either follow him or set up to block him from coming back so I go ahead and decide that I'm gonna go ahead and follow him over there and get into a position where we can take advantage of the fact that he's still flashing and I keep wanting Seymour I, I'm like oh, I just want to pull Seymour back right now can't do that so I go ahead and break put this guy and I'm th I thought that I had him far enough back but it ends up that it's not quite as far back as it should have been should have had it just a little bit further back there it's pretty close but it's just not quite far enough so our general has pretty much done the last of what he can do it's pretty much the last bit of health that he had to give to this kind of thing Oh, I think I remember part of what rain happens is he gets across the river first like and by first I mean like way too fast and everybody else is like still struggling to, to get to the river and he's already like past the river okay so we went ahead and put away berries again just because he took a big hit there and anytime they take a big hit they're gonna be like running really low on morale just because that's the way skirmishers are they they can't take any hits at all. Do a great job of knocking this guy back, but then we take this hit. I think that might be one of the big hits. Is that read or... I hate this playback where you can barely read anything. Um, oh, so I did move him far enough back, but then I moved him forward. And I should have, right there, I should have stopped him. I meant to stop him. That's why I hit pause, I think. But then I didn't, and I should have. Now I let it run a little bit longer. Now he's close enough that he's going to be firing at that guy. I thought those were all the cavalry. I was wrong. There's still one more cavalry. So, yeah, I see them firing, I think, right now. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Got to get the rest of them over there then. If he's already getting fired at, then we got we to gotta move forward now. So go ahead and get everybody moving forward. He's stunned, so we're good there. 
We do take a shot on Seymour, I think, there. No, I guess we don't. I thought we were going to take a shot on Seymour there. I thought we had taken a shot by the time I came over there, but it looks like we didn't actually take a shot, which is good. Go ahead and have them hold fire and move forward because we're just trying to get them trapped in this corner. We're not trying looking to try to do anything crazy here. We just really want to keep them bottled up for now. And we route that guy really fast. I was like, I'm I'm a little bit confused about how fast that guy routed. It seems to me like he should have been doing pretty good against my guy that was standing out there in the open. But probably that whole area over there is forest technically. So I didn't take damage. So here's the part where I, I move like everybody up. And then I think I move him up a second time without even unpausing basically because I decided that I should have moved him further. I guess I do unpause for a second there. So I should have been more careful here. I should not have moved that guy up yet until the other guy got there. Which isn't bad. I think I only take like a few losses there from that guy. And here we fire at the guy that's not charging us. So then I, I went ahead and broke out another skirmisher to go ahead and get a shot on the actual unit that's charging me instead of the wrong guy. There's where I moved Reigns too far forward. Still, Reigns hasn't taken all that much damage yet. It's only like 150... No, just... Oh, that's almost 200, isn't it? I think that's pretty much all the losses he's going to take. 185. So yeah, that's that's... Pretty close to how many he's going to take for the whole match. But he's one of the units that gets hit more than more than most. Just because of the position he was in and the fact that his skirmisher lost 100 men. If his skirmisher hadn't been the one that took the losses, then he would have done a lot better for a number of losses. But he still gets a bunch of kills, so I'm really not too sad. Seymour and uh, Hood there are going to get the most kills just because they're on the side that's going to move up and get shots for the longest period of time. I'm trying not to push them too hard here because I'm worried about having them all surrender and not getting a chance to... I mean, not surrender. Well, having them all surrender or shatter and not giving me a chance to um, play this to the full time limit because you know if you haven't noticed yet it's only 732 and the time that I have to get this map, map done I thought was till 2100 but it ends up being 1730 so I still have 10 hours left on this map and I'm going to try to use pretty much every minute of it and you see how even with the number of men that I've rotated up I still have too many men in the south I still have more than enough men down there to get done what I need to get done. And we just kind of keep shifting everybody down by one. Instead of running guys around the back and up, oftentimes the best way to actually get men there in a hurry is just to shift them down by one unit at a time. I go ahead and shift Leggett up the side because by this point I actually have enough men that he is just extra and that is all he is at this point so we go ahead and get some more shots on the cav we are going to get one capture on the cav i'm really curious to see if i can figure out exactly what happens here because i was a little mad that i didn't get more captures and also one unit breaks straight through so cav still is super human whenever it comes to some of these things and it's super super annoying whenever they can just so I'm looking at the stamina to see what all stamina I have on some of the units I have my general should be you know up there so that he can actually uh, affect the battle at all because where he is right now he basically can't affect the battle need to move Seymour down some more and Hood to allow them to stack up better here along with Rain. I think that's Rain. Yeah, Barry. Pool. Polk. McHenry. 
man, it's so hard to read those names. I basically just have to guess and just remember what they were. Cuts there. That's one thing about the numbers. Like, usually I can read the numbers better than I can these names because the names are so much more... So many more letters, obviously. So one guy looks like he's shattered already. So we're going to go ahead and charge the back guy. We have a shatter. And then this melee cav just kind of runs through all my men. And I'm just like, are you serious right now? So I go ahead and take all these guys and tell them to fire at him. Hoping that we can go ahead and get a shot off to shatter him. And I'm just like, I don't know if I'm going to or not. It doesn't matter. And then he disappears. Off screen. And I thought he got away. Because... I don't think I see any units running off the map once I go back over there, but it's been a while. Like, I waited a long time to come back over there, but now he's gone. We control the sight line, so should we have been able to see him? I really don't know. I'm guessing that he just, whatever units he had, just ran off the map real quick in a way that I didn't really get to see all that well. But one way or another, it all works out. So yeah, Hood and Seymour will get a bunch of shots on this guy, on these guys, um, basically for free. Because for some reason they shoot down here at uh, whoever the C is, the C guy. So I still think that the guy got away because I didn't actually see him die. I can't see him anywhere. So I'm just gonna keep moving. Oh, that was me pointing out where you should not move to if you don't want to get seen. Because that one sight line is huge. That is one of the biggest ones I've seen. Go ahead and tell him to stop running because there's no reason to keep running. We're just going to chase him down. as. So, we've got them all wrapped up here. And all we have to do is run down the clock. We've got 11 hours till it ends. I will see you then. Well... About 30 minutes before, we'll try to run down the guy. What I'm doing is I'm having my guy sit here, and he can get seen. So if he starts walking any way, then I'll know. He doesn't have a whole lot of life left, but sitting in a house like that, he should be able to take a shot or two. I can run him away if I have to. I'll just be waiting for him to shoot me or do something like that. See you guys there. I just want you guys to know just how boring this is. Like, it's like boring barely goes by like at all it's like one second per minute or something that's what it feels like so it's like 10 minutes I've got to sit here by myself just staring at my screen I can't leave because I'll be sure to be able to hit pause if something goes on so it's like I'm on needles for like 10 minutes it's a long time see you guys so I was lied to, in case anybody was wondering. It does not last till 2100. It lasts till 1730. At least if you hold the victory conditions, it does. So that means that I didn't have a chance to go out there and capture the last guy, because I thought that it ended at the time it said. Which makes me a little sad. Nothing too crazy, though. I mean, we got some good promotions. We got some good stuff. But I really want those last few captures there. Okay. 1730. I think my last save was like 1400, too. So it's going to be a long time again. I'll be back. So I got lucky, and it looks like he's not moving still, which is nice because I was expecting him to move after the reload because oftentimes they will move or do something that they hadn't been doing if you reload. So here's hoping. We'll get to about 1,700, and I'll be back. So to the liberty of bringing everybody up, I figured I might as well since... In this case, we're not dealing with like the first run. 
So I know that he isn't wanting to go anywhere because he didn't go anywhere whenever we started up, even though he could see my guy there. We should be able to basically just move in and hit him and that should cause him to want to run away. And then right after that, then we can have all of these guys charge. Well, we can tell him to charge now, I think. Now let's wait a second. Three, two, one, now charge. Get some rear shots. Yep, and that's pretty much it at that point. That guy's gonna capture him probably. Don't think he's gonna shatter with that many men left, but he might. There we go. And we lost 955 men to their, I mean, pretty much everybody. Only a few guys really got away and barely even them. Now, Seymour got a ton of kills there. Hood did too. And Barry and Reigns. Of course, a few of our guys took a few more losses than I would have liked. But we captured all but what, one, one unit of uh, infantry. A little sad about the fact that we let one get away, but you know, there's only so much you can do there. And I was a little sad we couldn't capture more of the horse guys, but there's no way I'm going for captures on skirmishers. And of course, with uh, artillery, they don't. You can't capture them, so I'm a little. It's a little surprising that they shattered at 122. I was expecting them to shatter a little bit lower. Usually they shatter at like 900, uh, like 90 or 70. So that's a little unexpected. And Reigns taking just about the most losses there was also a little unexpected. I feel like Reigns shouldn't have take taken quite that many losses, but I think he was the one that held up here this time, and that kind of back and forth in these trees and everything probably just took a little bit more losses than sometimes but yeah overall it was a good showing um, I'm not sad about any of it oh we did capture one one infantry Oh, that's the horse unit. I think I accidentally, I must have hit the button and turned it into an infantry. Or it automatically turned into infantry since it was uh, cavalry, uh, shooting cavalry. They only have one unit of shooting cavalry. And I guess the rest were those. Yeah, the melee cab is just never a problem if you catch them coming off board like that. Coming on board in that kind of way. Well, we got our 4,100 men lost, what, like 800 probably? Let me go put that in, and I'll be right back. So I'm a little sad, even with all that time that we spent there. We only got up to 98 morale. I mean, that's a bummer right there. Okay, so we've changed on over here. So, for some reason they brought a few less men this time. But we lost few, fewer men, like 300 less men. So we only lost 764 men. That is a tiny number of men taken, uh, men lost. And that is a record. Oh, it's not a record. It's a record here for like recent battles. Obviously, like this one doesn't count. And some of these early ones, obviously, I'm not going to lose all that many men. But. I mean, as far as this goes, that's 764 in a battle with 30,000 men against 21,000 men. I'd take that. 20.2 to 1, 25.3 to 1 with uh, medicine. That is uh, right where you want to be in the 20s. I mean, I think that's pretty amazing. And of course, the main reason why 
I'm able to do that is because of my general. The general unit is pretty overpowered, not gonna lie. Like being able to run him in there, him take shots and stuff like that. Lessens our losses by a whole lot. But, you know, it's a lot of micro and I think that the effort is worth it, but in a lot of ways, it's a lot of effort. Well, let's switch back on over here to the game. And of course the career point's gonna go into economy. And we are looking at one last battle. The Blackwater River slash Blackwater Heights battle. We should be able to wrap that up. We're gonna be able to take like I think 20 units, so we're gonna bring in most of these units into the next one. And I will see you there. Have a good one.